This is Mimo, Mike Mozart, and this is my new art studio. I've been long known as the artist mentor behind Alec Monopoly and his success, and I created all of his iconic early designs. His entire career was based on these. But you have to remember something, that artwork is valuable really for one reason. The background of the artist, the history of the artist, what that artist has meant to, to the world, really. And it's all wrapped up in that signature. That signature is where all the value is. I was a street artist when I was 10 and 12 years old painting walls. Here I am at 12 years old painting a mural in a Sears parking lot. At 12 years old in Maine, I shot a bear defending my grandmother and her elderly brother in this cabin at point blank range. A lot of the pictures of my youth, I'm in this pose because everyone said, do the wolf thing. When I was young on this farm where I spent my summers as a kid in Maine, I killed a wolf that was attacking a two-year-old boy, a wolf like this one. I have lived an absolutely extraordinary life before my art career even began. I am working on a documentary with a large production company, and I believed it would start with my art career that I started at 15 years old with my first children's book. And you can see that I'm an OG artist of Uncle Scrooge McDuck here. I have been drawing and painting him since I was 15 years old professionally. And I can draw or paint any Disney character from memory. It looks just like my Uncle Scrooge is now. That's when I probably did when I was 20. I was an artist of Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola bear. I did the Coca-Cola Santas. I did all the Disney Easter products for years. Easter egg color kits, Easter baskets, Easter everything. Sesame Street as well. I did Teletubbies. You know, I did anything. I did Mickey. I was one of the major designers of most of the Christmas, Easter, and Halloween products in the United States for almost 30 years. I was the go-to designer for almost anything if it was a seasonal holiday thing and lawn and garden products too. There was one of my Halloween door covers with Mickey Mouse. That's my artwork, my design, my packaging design. Here is a Halloween windsock with Donald Duck. and Oh, I used to appear on QVC. And I sold on a garden products on QVC for 20 years as a live on-air talent and presenter. And these were all products I designed and invented. A birdhouse planter the birds catch and live inside while it was growing plants. This is a tower of flowers for your front door. You know, I sold tens of millions of dollars worth of these products over decades of selling live on air. This is my product. I designed Crayola products also during the same time period. I was a very busy artist. These are my products. These are my designs. This is a prototype for the Crayola marker airbrush set. I did M&M's products, M&M's toys, M&M's clocks. I was one of the major designers of nutcrackers. I was like the go-to person in the world. I have over a hundred albums like this filled with all the products I designed and created. And I tried to keep one of everything I did. And I don't know how close I've come to that because it's become apparent I've designed at least 2,500 products and maybe as many as 4,000. I invented, created, and designed over 40 infomercial products, Binda what? including Benderoos, Binda the amazing flexible building sticks, Shaper, and top selling quick brights. Look how these work. My design, my invention. With quick brights, the super bright LED lights that go on anywhere. They install in seconds. Simply peel in place on any door, drawer, or cabinet. And quick brights go on automatically when you open and off when you close. Perfect to light up dark drawers, bright enough to light a closet, or to help you see clearly in dark cabinets. And this they is my MXZ saw and MXZ wrench. There's my original design sketch. MXZ saw is yours for only $19.95. Guaranteed to never dull or break or we'll replace it free. But wait, call now and we'll give you this fantastic MXZ wrench absolutely free. Just pay shipping and handling. It tightens or loosens practically any size nut without searching. I've also created dozens of very intricate and elaborate collectibles for the Danbury Mint. I did those in very early in my career, the late 80s until the mid-90s. And I probably did some of the most elaborate, beautiful collectibles that I'd ever created. Oh, I'm a professional sculptor too, way before computers started doing it. In the first five years of YouTube, I was always one of the top 20 most subscribed and most viewed channels. I still have over a million subscribers amongst my top channels. And I got those from doing toy reviews of bad toys and great toys. In the mid-1980s, I hosted a kid show 
with a guy with a puppet that later went on to become Elf. The show ended when he left to become Elf. I am an incredibly prolific designer of plush toys. I did these mini plush toys for Michaels for years. I must have designed five or 600 of these mini plush just for them for all the seasons. They were a huge craft item in the late 80s up until about 2006. I, these are my sketches. For years, I assisted artists that were behind on their work or missing deadlines. One was Bob Weber, one of the greatest cartoonists, one of the greatest guys. And he did a comic strip called Moose, which was later renamed Moose and Molly. And I assisted him a lot. I wrote the gags, I drew the pictures, I inked the pictures, I chose colors. And I helped him quite a lot when he got sort of behind on his deadlines. And I have a lot of his originals. He, he was an amazing, amazing person to know. This is my writing, these are my gags. So I wrote them, I, I colored them, I, I outlined them, and I helped him beat those deadlines as fast as I could. And if you could stop it and look at these gags, they're pretty funny and I'm very happy that I wrote these, and I'm very proud of this work I did. I, I did a lot of work for other King Feature Syndicate artists, too. Walt Kelly's widow, Selby, was interested in bringing back Pogo, an old comic strip that stopped with the passing of Walt Kelly. And I worked with her and came out with some strips, but it sounded like it was going to be too much of a nightmare dealing with the family, so I wound up not doing it. I helped out a lot of other artists, including Guy Gilchrist, here shown with Jim Henson. Yes, Guy Gilchrist was the artist of the comic strip, The Muppets, and I actually worked in his studio for a while. And this is one of the projects I worked on. It was a Muppet Babies coloring book, and Guy Gilchrist was the nicest guy. And he gave me originals on the projects I worked on for him, and he signed them to me. They were great. It's been quite a year. It's been quite a tumultuous year, and this is a very special show. I am broadcasting this live right now. And I am sharing with everyone out there a lot of the products I designed and created in the last 45 years of my career. I have been a professional artist since I was 15 years old when I illustrated my first children's book. And I have not really stopped being an artist the whole time. Even when I was broadcasting my YouTube videos to a million followers, and when I was one of the top 20 YouTubers, even at that time, I was still designing and creating toys and products. And a lot of the toys, products, and things that I created, you all had as children. You all had as adults. They were around your house. You could not have avoided them. And I am having, right now, quite an experience with a documentary being filmed about my life by a large production company. And I have given interviews already, and they have said, we want to see the stuff. We want to see all these products. We want to see all these toys. We want to see all this documentation. So my art studio, this new art studio that I moved into during the pandemic, which was tragic move. Oh my God. Um, it, the studio had been more or less boarded up practically for the past however many decades. It was really nice to see the sunshine come back in this old building. It needed everything, but I love the location. The location is fantastic and I was willing to put the work into it. But I just didn't realize during the pandemic just how you couldn't get wood, you couldn't get paint, you couldn't get any building supplies for anything. And when the pandemic started in 2019, I was just getting over a broken knee. I had actually broken my right knee and it required, well, I only had two of the three surgeries because when the third one was scheduled, the pandemic started. And I didn't think they were gonna shut down everything totally like in April of 2020. Everything in Connecticut shut down for like 16 months. And most of the suppliers that supplied all my arts and crafts supplies, my paints, my canvases, everything else, most of the suppliers that furnished everything I needed were gone. And I bought products from all over the world. So you guys remember during the pandemic where there were times you couldn't get meat, you couldn't get milk, you couldn't get eggs, you couldn't get common simple things like toilet paper. My products that I create, my artwork, <laughs> is much more complicated, much more difficult to source, much more difficult to find. And most of them had one unique supplier in the world or two unique suppliers in the whole world. So they all shut down during the pandemic and I was more or less without anything to paint with. I couldn't get canvases, I couldn't get paint, I couldn't get paint brushes. And I have paintings that are made with these extraordinary metal flakes. And I was just so 
so overwhelmed by that, I said, you know, this is the time to really get to the studio move. My old art studio was a big, leaky, drippy mess. The roof leaked so badly, the water ran down the front of the building, inside the wall. It emptied right into my art studio. The front foyer leaked water so badly, the water ran down the inside of the glass. We'd often have two or three inches of water downstairs. And the new one, as, as I was moving into it, was probably just as bad, but at least it's, it's more or less fixed now because I really like the place. It's this cool old building. Look how cool and old this building is. And this is my art studio. It's very huge, and I have some murals going on the walls here. But I haven't really been able to work on almost anything because during the time of moving in, it took so much effort because I couldn't get anyone to help me move. During the pandemic, you couldn't like hire people. There was no interns at the schools. And a lot of this big move happened by myself. A lot of these, all these walls here were, weren't even there. It was over six months of hard work to wrangle the place back together, to get the roof from leaking and get the windows open and just get it usable and nice. And it was quite an undertaking, quite an effort. And during the course of a move and trying to get stuff here, the few people that I found that could actually help me move did a terrible job. And um, until the last person, I found a great guy named Kelly near the very end of the move. But leading up to that point, I had, I had charlatans, grifters, cheaters, gumbags trying, trying to move me. And um, in the course of the move, you know, I, I create all these beautiful big paintings. See, I'm an artist and I create gorgeous big paintings now. See, this is what I do. And during this terrible move, I, I, I like doing Mr. Monopoly. Here's a Mr. Monopoly one over here. See, it has an angel and a devil on a cloud. But this painting is a good example. During the move, this painting started as this. And during the move, the, due to these terrible movers, 16 of the paintings I had in production were destroyed by water. They had loaded them into trucks that had leaky roofs. We moved them in the rain and they were saturated. And my paintings were destroyed. Almost every painting I had that was currently in production. The original paintings were beautiful, but completely unsalvageable. My new recreations on fresh canvases are not only magnificent, I think they're much nicer than the originals because I got to explore incredible new materials for my paintings. I needed to find suitable replacements for all the metal flakes and the medium that attach them to. And right now, I have waited all this time to get my supplies back again. And this past spring, in spring of 2022, in February, I got my first order of my rare paints that I use for my paintings. I use very unusual paints that nobody in the world really has. I use techniques that nobody has, and it's taken me years to develop these things. And I finally got my paints so I could get going again. The mediums I use to put this up on the canvases, and they came from the Ukraine. And just as soon as I got my first load in and everything was fine, and I put in my second order so I could finish all my paintings, Putin bombed the factories that I was using to make my metal flake materials out of existence. And I was stuck again. And I had worked for years to develop these techniques that make my painting super sparkly. And, and if you're not familiar with my paintings, the ones I do now for, for artwork. I really didn't have enough metal flakes, paints, or medium, or anything to finish paintings. But I had a lot of samples that I had tested that worked that I couldn't get again. Some of these samples were very rare and very beautiful and had real gold dust and real diamond chips. And I used those little tiny bits of gram samples to create a small number of paintings just as the pandemic was starting. But you can see how beautiful and how sparkly and how amazing these paintings are. This is the technique that I create, work on, and love. And my paintings are beautiful and sparkly. I'm here in my studio and I have a lot of artwork laying out on tables. I have a lot of paintings out. I have a lot of product samples out. These are all products that I designed over the past 45 years. A lot of them that you had when you were a child. Ones that you can still buy in stores now. And these are all actual products that I actually made. And I'm going to walk around the room and tell you about everything that I've, I have created in my whole career because it's astounding even to me. And the documentary that's being filmed on my life is going to rest a large part on all the stuff I did. And I've had to dig everything out. 
after this terrible move, terrible water damage, no supplies available, finally get my supplies and the factories are bombed out of existence, I had to start over from scratch to come up with all new techniques for my paintings that would yield the beautiful results that I was used to. And I've got it. And things are being finished finally after all this struggle and all this pain and all this aggravation. But since I have all this stuff out right now, I thought I would share with you all the products that I designed and created for years. And this isn't all of them. I have taken out samples here, probably of, let's see, 10% of the stuff I've designed and created, just 10%. I was an artist of Disney books and Disney products for almost 30 solid years. Hundreds and hundreds of Disney products, and I will be showing you a lot of them. I did over 100 Disney books, and this is one of them. It's a Little Mermaid pillow store. And it's a pillow that opens up, but this is my artwork. This is 100% my artwork that I created and designed for this book. I did all kinds of books. And what's interesting about these, the ones I have here, I have a lot of these, is that these are color and activity books. This is all my artwork. Here's, here's one of the pieces of artwork that was used to make this book. I'll see. So here is a goofy illustration. That's the original artwork that I made. And there it is reproduced in this book. So you can see that I have the artwork that was used to make these books. If you look at these books, you will see that I am an actual OG artist of Uncle Scrooge McDuck. This book is from 1991. This book is 30 years old, actually over 30 years old. And this shows all the characters that I regularly drew and painted in the Disney family, even at that time. There's another Uncle Scrooge McDuck who was my favorite character to draw and paint. And I started a mural up here on the wall, but I ran out of paint during the pandemic. You couldn't buy paint for anything. And all the online retailers that usually would sell paint, even arts and crafts stores, did not have the paints I needed. <sighs> so here's another Uncle Scrooge McDuck, because I like painting Uncle Scrooge so much. I used him as much as possible in all the books that I designed and created. And I'm still known for Uncle Scrooge McDuck. There, I was assisting and mentoring another artist. And I recommended that he should feature Mr. Monopoly, Uncle Scrooge McDuck, and Richie Rich. And I want everyone to know that this is a character I regularly drew, can draw from memory. I can draw all these characters from memory. And this, everything you're seeing is my original artwork. I also have a lot of color artwork that I did. And I believe that I did some of the most beautiful coloring and activity books in the Disney family for decades. Let me, let me turn the camera on so you get an idea just how big these murals are here. Look how big they are. Oh, I let my beard grow out so you can really see my beard's long right now. I'm going to cosplay a werewolf for Halloween. If I let my face grow out in hair, I don't have to get the cos part. I already look very werewolfy if I do that. So I've let my beard grow out for a week or two so it gets really, really, really long. It grows super duper fast. And I would say one of the most heartbreaking things I've had to endure is not having all these rare paints. I had spent, when I first started doing wall art about seven years ago, because I had mentored an artist that more or less burned me, I should say. I started testing paints under Art Resin because I love this Art Resin product. It's crystal clear and it makes paints like magical underneath. See these magical effects I got from all these amazing paints where they shift colors and they're reflective. Some of them are very sparkly. You'll see a lot of these, I'll show them. So I tested all of these paints and all these metal flakes like they use in cars. And I came up with the most beautiful ones in the entire world. And during the pandemic, nothing was available except very simple, plain paint. And even that was terrible quality. And when the pandemic ended, almost none of these paintings were available. These paints that I have on all these test canvases, over a hundred test canvases worth of paint became unavailable after all those years of using these. And I had to retest every single paint that I had because I love art resin, but art resin is resistant to some paint. Can you see if there's like a crater there? Can you see like there's a crater there? Some paints do not like art resin and create craters when you pour it on. And I can't have craters in my paintings. So I had to retest hundreds of paints that were available after the pandemic was over. 
And it took me so long to do it. And then, unfortunately, Vladimir Putin bombed the factories that made the medium that held the metal flakes on. <laughs> so I had to retest everything again. Since all of my original test canvases aren't useful anymore, I'm painting little self-portraits of myself on them. I actually sold one during the pandemic. I am going to show you right now a lot of the stuff I designed and created over my life. I am not a normal artist. I'm not an artist that is a faker, like most of the artists out there today that basically just pay other artists to paint their paintings for them and they don't even sign them. Or they just do CGI paintings and print them out on canvas and say it's a work of art. All my paintings are real paint on real canvases. Here, I'll show you. See, this is real paint on real canvas painted by me, by myself, with no help, no assistance. And this is what one of the paintings looks like with the metal flakes and the art resin finish. These are super sparkly if the light is a little bit more dim than this. They like evening lighting and they go crazy under evening lighting. I do a lot more than this style. I was sort of the father and introducer of the style. My favorite style to paint is more like Van Gogh style. I have been painting like Van Gogh style for fun of it for years. These are paintings that I create very quickly up here. The smaller paintings like these are ones I use to warm up. Like in the morning, if I come into paint, I just will just freehand from my mind, just paint paintings like this, usually one painting in the morning. And they sort of accumulate. And sometimes I do a self-portrait, say the Picasso looking style. I got my first book job when I was 15 years old, children's book. And I have designed over 4,000 products. And this documentary that's being created has asked you know, not only to film them, but to come up with some documentation to actually prove I did that many products. Because if I can just prove that, that means I am the most prolific commercial artist that's ever lived. There's, there's been no artist ever to have claimed to created any more products than maybe 900 products. And I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of the products I've created so you can just see them and marvel at them. I mean, I still do the big wall art paintings this is one of the wall art paintings I'm working on. It is a, it is a three-dimensional canvas. It's a real canvas stretched over a frame in the shape of Mr. Monopoly provided by Canvasthetics. And that's one that's in production right now. This is a three by five painting of Mr. Monopoly. So a lot of these were started before the move. These are ones that didn't get damaged on the way. Yes, and I'm gonna be doing more of those tours that I used to do years ago. And this painting is ready to resin. This is a, a little project that most of the paintings are ready for right now. Here's another Marilyn over here. I like using real Wall Street Journal backgrounds, by the way. These are 100 year old Wall Street Journal backgrounds, original ones. And I perfected a technique to apply them to canvases perfectly, perfectly. I use Mimo, which is short for Mike Mozart. It's like JLo. I had used Mimo years ago for street art. That was my street art name when I did murals on walls or graffiti. I had, in my entire art career, used a different name. I was not Mike Mozart in my entire art career because I always wanted to be a fine artist with paintings that hang on gallery walls. That was my mother's dream. That was kind of my dream. Every artist dreams to be in art galleries in New York City. And if you're a commercial artist doing Disney books and Ninja Turtle sculptures and things like that, the art galleries don't, don't treat you right. They don't believe that you could be a fine artist. They don't believe your art has value. <sighs> so um, I use another name and I already made a couple of videos about this on other streaming media, but I want you to all know that just about everything I ever created in my art career, and I have a lot of it here, is I use a different name. The name I used is Michael Wolf. Tat signature, it's all Michael Wolf. And I have done hundreds and hundreds of products as Michael Wolf because I always wanted someday to have my real name on artwork. Well, realish name. You're gonna discover something else that's kind of interesting here. First, let me show you a lot of these products that I designed. So all the nutcrackers I ever created or designed have the brand Michael Wolf collection. Right here, see? Michael Wolf. Now people that know me 
in real life. These were, these were all nutcrackers I designed. When I say nutcrackers, I designed thousands of Christmas decorations. Not just nutcrackers. It's just that the nutcrackers are so big and beautiful and I love doing them. For all of you that have attended my live streaming shows on blog TV and such over the years, because I was a big live streamer, the one thing the live streamers knew is what my real name was. My real name, my first name is Wolfgang. And I grew up with everyone calling me Wolf and Wolfie. That was my name. Everyone called me Wolf and Wolfie. And um, they actually didn't say it that way. It was actually pronounced Wolf. Wolf and Wolfie. And my actual middle name is Michael. So let me show you a little bit more of the stuff I've designed. I think you'll enjoy seeing it and you'll see just how much I've done. Everyone knows that I've done people like Uncle Scrooge McDuck. Like this beautiful painting here. I finally got the, the materials to finish it now because Putin bombed the factory out of existence. I have, I have created so many paintings that got stalled because of that. And I have, now I'm just finishing them all as quickly as possible. Now, some of the things you guys don't know is that I designed all this blow molded stuff, decorations that went on lawns because I designed everything for all the seasons for all the major department stores. Every store in the world had my products for Christmas, Easter, and Halloween. I created, designed, and sculpted the masters for these blow molded items that went out on people's lawns for the holidays in the 1980s, 1990s, early 2000s. I did quite a few more of these. These are just a few of them. Now, what a lot of people don't know is I sold products for decades on QVC. QVC and Home Shopping Network featured products I created and sold. This is, this is me. That's Mike Moser right there. That is Dan from the morning show of QVC. This is the QVC garage set that faces their main stage on QVC, and those are planters. Now, what you guys don't know is I sold lawn and garden products on QVC, including this ball planter that you hang and you put flowers in it. It makes a living ball of flowers. I did a living wreath flower planter, and I did a birdhouse planter. Oh, the birdhouse planter isn't here, but I do have a tower of flowers. I did this so you could hang on your front door and create a tower of flowers, see? The tower of flowers. And I sold these on QVC and the Home Shopping Network for years. I sold over 100 products on QVC and Home Shopping Network. I designed and created myself. I was the sole designer of almost every Disney Easter product, Halloween product or Christmas product that was made, except for costumes and candy. And this is one of my Easter products. And this is 101 Dalmatians color form set. I, I created this around 1990 or 1991. It's all my artwork. I did all the Little Mermaid Easter egg color kits for decades. Just about anything that was a Disney Easter product, this is all my artwork. That is my artwork for Mickey and Donald there. I designed the kits for coloring Easter eggs and all the little inserts that are inside, the little cutouts of the characters and the little tattoos that you put on yourself and the eggs, that's all my artwork. I designed hundreds of Disney products. I did them for the Disney stores. I did them for Walmart, Kmart, Target. I did them endlessly and I did a lot of them. And this is one of them, the Aladdin eggs. And I did all the inserts. This is all my art and illustration here, guys. And it goes on and on. I, I am going to publish on my Discord here, the Halloween windsock featuring um, Donald. I did, oh, here I did this goofy flag over here. This Disney flag of, of um, Goofy there were two of them in the set. There was a Mickey Mouse one too. I actually did a Donald one too. And these sold over a million pieces. This was, a, that's a lot of items for Halloween. And a lot of people still have these. It's a big flag. It only retailed for like a dollar. It's very heavy plastic, but it was a great deal and everyone bought them. And I was so happy to design them. And I actually sold a bunch of those same products on QVC. Here's another picture of me on the set of QVC. And here's another picture of Mike Moser on the set of QVC back in the day, about 1989 or 1990. I was one that created doing giant plastic Easter eggs to put on your lawn. I also, for Easter, did all of these different little bunny eggs to hang your tree. And some of them had clear plastic fronts so you could actually see the candy when you had candy inside them or something. And I have hundreds of these. This is what my artwork looked like when I made presentations. If I went to a company and I wanted to present them with an idea, I would do a painting like this. This is airbrushed. 
This is, there was no computers. When I did this stuff, this was totally analog. And this is something I airbrushed at the time to sell a line of products. This is my artwork as Michael Wolf, because that's the name I went by for all my art until I started doing the paintings that I'm doing right now. I'm also kind of famous for designing a lot of motion figures. And this is probably one of the more famous motion figures of all. This is one of the motionettes that were made by Telco. These had come out in the late 1960s, early 70s. And I found an American distributor that was willing to run them if I would sort of reinvent them and freshen them up and make them look more modern. So I made this little wolf guy and guy here. See, I sort of made him look like me. See? Ah. So this is a light and sound thing. I'll turn them on so you can hear them. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I love doing this. I love this stuff. See how he's moving? Look. He's motion there, but you can add light and sound. Watch his eyes. Hold on. Pretty loud. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I mean really, what was I thinking? So I cursed, I cursed 100,000 homes with this little toy. And I did a Dracula, a Frankenstein, and um, a witch, I think at the time. I, I, I did a mummy too, I don't know if they actually made the mummy, now I'm thinking about it. So I designed all these. I designed over 100 different motion toys. And I've got samples of a lot of them right here right now. So I'm gonna walk around and show you even more of these things. That's why I'm going to post on my Discord. I created a Discord server and I'm going to post at least 4,000 products I personally created and designed and drew the pictures of with the original drawings to show that I actually did them and where they were sold and pictures of me holding the actual samples for most of them because I was that productive of an artist. I was one of those artists that works night and day, night and day, night and day. And when this pandemic hit, you cannot imagine how much it crushed me, an artist that's so used to drawing night and day and painting seven days a week because he loved it so much. <sighs> so I thought, well, this is probably a good time to pack up and move the studio and get rid of all the extra stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh, you remember me on Bonnie Hunt? I also appeared on the Bonnie Hunt show. The Bonnie Hunt show was an NBC television show and that appeared just before Ellen on NBC. And I made three appearances on the Bonnie Hunt show and I appeared on quite a few NBC. NBC loved me. And I was also on the Today Show in the Rockefeller Center reviewing the hot toys and hot things for summer and the hot things for Christmas every year. Me, me in person. One of them's funny because Borat showed up for one for the hot toys of summer and Borat was one of the, the guests there and he came dressed as Bruno and it was my birthday. It just happened that I made my appearance on my birthday. He made a sign that said happy birthday and, and waved it around Rockefeller Center. Not many people would call him nice, I don't think, but. I think he's cool. I was quite famous all over the world for toy reviews because I was famous on YouTube being the failed toy reviewer. And I usually wore this hat or a hat like this one when I was doing my failed toy reviews. And I used to find toys that I thought were um, questionable, like this Goatsy camera, okay? If you don't know what Goatsy is, this that means that it looks like Mickey Mouse is bent over grabbing his pants because his pants are the only thing that are red and he's exposing something. I mean, really. And this is Brad Repeat and Tarzan. There's no batteries in him right now, but this toy, if you press the lever on the back in the Try Me package back here, here you go. See, it looked a little inappropriate in the package when kids tried it in the store. I mean, really. It's one of the first toy reviews I did. And I'm a big collector of knockoff toys. I love knockoff, cheap, Chinese, terrible knockoffs. And I have a huge collection of them and I filmed a lot of reviews of these. They're mostly on Jeepers Media on YouTube. And I could not get enough of this stuff. And I have a lot of them that I never reviewed, which I'm going to review. I have like the creepiest dolls in history too. This is Baby Secret. Look at my video of Baby Secret. So here, here is Baby Secret. Listen to what she says. I hope you can hear her, listen. She has a pull string. I mean, yeah, this was, a, it was not meant to be scary. It was meant to be a nice toy for good girls to take to bed at night. Okay. My YouTube toy reviews have over half a billion views and I still have over 700,000 loyal followers. What a lot of people don't know is I actually designed a lot of Lego toy products. 
And this is one of my illustrations for Lego Dacta. Lego Dacta was their educational division, but I probably did 450 or 500 illustrations for Lego toys. And I probably designed 25 different toy products for them. Really? I mean, really? Now, something else that's interesting, uh, you know, and during, of course, during the pandemic, I just didn't sit around. I did everything I could to get everything up and going again with my paintings and getting this place fixed up. But I've also had to go through all my old stuff. And check this out. This is, this is me. That's Mimo Mike Mozart with a puppet. Okay? Kids Time Express. And I was a host of a kids TV show. And that yellow puppet became Alf. If you've ever heard of Alf. The guy that's under that table right now with that puppet that I drew live on this show is Paul Fusco. Paul Fusco was only on this show for a few more months and he got a, a deal in Hollywood to create a puppet called Elf. And that was me with the, with the prototype Elf doing a live kids show back in like 1984 or 85. This was a long time ago. I know the picture's terrible. I have the original photographs, but they've all discolored from age. I have the negatives, so I'm gonna have all these pictures redone, and I have tapes. I'm gonna post tapes of young Mike Mozart here broadcasting live on WTXX Waterbury, Connecticut, with TX Critter. He was called TX Critter at the time. Alf was TX Critter, and there's a picture of me with TX Critter. Um, and I was doing live drawings and paintings and everything on that live kid show. It was an afternoon show. And what happened is I used to film a block of them for all week, like between 5.30 in the morning and 10 o'clock in the morning. I would go in there and I would film all these interstitial things that went between all of the um, animated cartoons they would run for kids. And I, they called me Mr. Mike. On the show, I'm Mr. Mike. You're gonna find out I did a lot of cartoon character voices and all the cartoons that you grew up in. I never promoted it. I never told anybody except I did some on my live show to tell people, you know, I used to do cartoon character voices. And the big surprise is when I was doing them in 1979, 80, 81, I did them on and off all the way up until the 2000s. Isn't that cool? It's a denim jacket I wear. I have a lot of things like that. I used to paint those live for years. But again, during the pandemic, I couldn't get fabric paint. <laughs> I couldn't get anything. Um, I used to design a lot of plush toys. And these are a bunch of my plush toys. I did these for the Michaels Arts and Crafts chain. And I did these for over a decade and they had a whole section of them. And look at this, the little hug. This is what the packaging looked like that they were in. These were all my little plush toys. And I did a lot more than this. I did 450 different little plush animals that were sold at Michael's alone. And the, and people would hang them on the trees as Christmas tree decorations, or it's like, see, I have Christmas ones. Or they would put them in their Christmas wreaths. So it'd be like little bears in their Christmas wreath. Or I would do little Easter bunnies for other seasons. I would do like little summer versions, like this little Indian maiden looking one. I did a lot of these things. Oh, I did a lot of Christmas decorations. You're gonna see a lot of these things. These were all made and sold in department stores. They were sold, Norton Taylor, Filings, Macy's, I mean, Nordstrom's, all the big stores had all the decorations that I created and designed for years, for years. And I mean, I have boxes and bags of these things and all the illustrations that were used to create them. Look, these little dolls were Christmas tree decorations I did. And a lot of my drawings look like this. Here, these are kind of frou-frou Victorian ones, but I would sketch out design ideas like this and do entire programs of Halloween or Christmas for people like Macy's. These were from Macy's. Macy's actually ran this Victorian Christmas stuff around 1992, 93. And I have samples of how it all looked when it was actually made. Here's a piece. See? I know it's kind of frou-frou, but it's not my taste, but I would design them. And they, they matched the line that I was working on. I did this for a long time, guys. I am actually a product sculptor and I sculpted hundreds of products because back in the day, before they had computers, if they wanted to do a toy, somebody had to sculpt it like this. And I was that sculptor. I sculpted real Ghostbusters toys. I sculpted Ninja Turtle toys. And I made these as original sculptures that were used to make the mold to produce the toys. If you're a product designer, you use what's called a style guide. Nowadays, they're either on CDs or available online with a, a password. But back then, you'd get these style guides that show you how 
to draw and paint all the characters. This is a huge Nintendo style guide. Look how thick this one is. And I used to, I have style guides for almost every major character that was ever made. Oh, I have to show you this because it's interesting. I have an interesting visual problem sometimes and it's called migraine with aura. And that's one of the reasons I like sparkly things is I get these migraine headaches, but there's no pain. But I get this pattern in front of my eyes. They don't happen very often, but when they happen, they're quite spectacular. And I actually did a little painting of it. Over here are some of more of my Christmas stuff. And I will tell you, I, I have done, created, designed probably 2,000 nutcrackers. And it was my Christmas products I designed for years that intrigued me enough to do all my paintings with metal flakes. See the metal flakes on this nutcracker. So I became an expert on metal flake finishes when I was designing all the Christmas stuff in the world. And I thought it looked really rich with all the hype art I was doing. And it was so beautiful. Here, here are little sculptures I did, little Christmas, Christmas ornaments. These are small. Guys, I used to sculpt this stuff all day long. This is a prototype. I have more cool nutcrackers. Look at this nutcracker at a computer. I mean, really. Look at my little nutcrackers. I didn't do anything normal. All my products were unique and magnificent. And I did a lot of little toy boats because I like making models when I was a kid. I also, here, I'll show you some of these. I did these for, this is a, um, a Hershey's Kiss dispenser, a sleigh full of wishes and kisses. Santa would hold a kiss. This is my sculpture. Do you like it? And the little elf guy here would have a Hershey's Kiss to be the point of his hat. He'd fill the sleigh with Hershey's Kisses. And this was at the Hershey Parks as one of the things. And this is my design, my sculpture and everything. And they sold those. It was one of the things they sold. Here's another thing they sold. Look, Kissed by an Angel. And the angel holds out a Hershey's Kiss. And the cloud is full of Hershey's Kisses when you fill it up. I did these for the M&M stores. And this is a Santa Claus. You know, thousands of these were made. A sack full of sweet treats for you. And you would load the top with M&Ms and they would self-dispense into the tray like those dog food bowls. <laughs> that did it. Um, I did a lot of nutcrackers, but I also did a lot of tin products. This is a tin metal product. And this is one of my designs. And when Harry Potter came out, there weren't a lot of products in stores to buy. There were licensed Harry Potter that were cool for kids. And I did a lot of wizard things. They weren't Harry Potter, but they were wizard things. And I did lines called like wizard school and such. And, um, oh, by the way, I traveled all over China. I've been to China probably 50 times. Here is Mike Mozart in China, probably around, I don't know, this picture is probably around 1989, 1988, 1989. Because I went to all the factories that made all these products. I went to the factories to make sure everything was being made beautifully at the factories. And I also used to go scout out brand new factories so I could find the best people in the world to make my products. And I have hundreds of pictures of myself in China and all over the world, Indonesia, Bali, the Philippines, everywhere. I've been all over the whole world and I have a million pictures throughout my whole career of going everywhere. I've been to China probably 120 times over the past 30 years. So I designed a lot of stuff that was just beautiful. Do you see the colorful finish? I actually used that same material on my paintings because my whole goal was to find finishes that were beautiful, reflective, colorful, and different than anything anybody else ever had. And that's it's one of the things I actually use on my paintings now. Here's another candy dispenser I made. This is so beautiful in use. It is, it's called Candy Mountain and you put lollipops and candy canes in it. And it's a dispenser and it's beautiful. I got paint on my hands, I just noticed. I love, I love sculpting polar bears. I've sculpted a lot of polar bears in my life. When I go to the factories in China, I bring along this little book. Uh, not this one, but I would get one of these little books and I would staple a business card from every factory I went to with the notes, what the factory sold, what their quality was. And I would go back to the United States and I'd have every factory that I use for all these different products. I still have all these books. I have 170 of these. So that's a lot of books. I had worked for this company designing products. I didn't work for them. I was, an, I was an independent person that got royalties. That's a table, a nutcracker table. Almost everything in their catalogs is something I designed. And these catalogs have hundreds of items in them. 
I learned how to create my beautiful sparkly metal flake finishes on my paintings because I designed thousands of Christmas tree ornaments. As I did Crayola products. I designed Crayola products for a decade. And I my products were some of the best selling arts and crafts products in history. I bet a bunch of you kids have seen this. The paint with watercolor set, the pink rainbows. This is my design, my creation. I sold this on QVC in real time. I sold this in infomercials. It's, it's the amazing Crayola Multi Watercolors. It's one of the easiest ways ever to make great works of art. Crayola's Multi Watercolors paint up to four the colors. Reflecto art set from Crayola. That's mine. And I drew the pictures inside that the kids would trace using this. It sort of ghosts the image onto a piece of paper. I have the Crayola catalogs from the time period I was making these. And I'm going to put these on my Discord so you can see just how much product I sold. I did the Crayola Candy Button Maker, and that's a prototype sample right there of what I made. Isn't that beautiful? I actually made candy buttons. Oh, this is one of my poster phones. I did poster phones and poster speaker radios, and they're flat. You hang them on a wall like a little poster. See? That's where the batteries and electronics are. Sold thousands and thousands of these things. And I did Coca-Cola. I did all the Hanna-Barbera characters. I did, um, I did Scooby-Doo. I did everything with these. I did Barbie. There were so many of these and they were a big item in like 1987 to 91. They were very popular. I did Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. You remember those guys? This is mine. This is all my artwork here. Look, damn, I was good. I still am good. This is unfortunate because I did this book probably around 1987 when my kids were still young and they colored in a lot of my sample books. So as I flip through, it's all my artwork, but unfortunately it's all colored in. You'll see as we go along, the kids actually completed the puzzles. There's Chip and Dale. I love Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. It was one of my favorite shows in history. And if you guys um, have ever seen something called Weekly Reader Books, I illustrated probably 50 of these books. This is just one of them. This is all my art and illustration inside. Look at this. I was a commercial artist and did this stuff all the time at a commercial art studio. And I was creating probably 25 to 30 pieces of artwork at least a week. And I used to do a lot of these books. I did them a lot. These books paid a lot of money back then. This book probably paid like $12,000 for the artwork in it back then. You know, in say 1982 maybe or 83. I did a lot of this stuff. I did a lot of work for Weekly Reader. And I used to bring back old books. This is an old book I found that the copyright expired on and I brought the book back. I got a publisher to re-release this book and it needed some changes in the book. There were some things that weren't politically correct now, but look, pop up. This is mine, isn't that cool? I brought this book back and I got royalties on it because I, I fixed the artwork in it. And I did tons of these things, like, you know, the generic coloring books. Oh, I used to, I used to plow these out because I, I'm very quick at doing drawings. I love to do quick drawings. And I probably, I have no idea how many books I've done. I must have done 125 of this type, type of book, like Happy Easter or Santa Claus is Coming to Town type books. I mean, I did a lot, guys. Oh, this is one of my my infomercial products. It's the handy four-in-one trolley. It folds up so it can fold halfway up and still work or all the way up and work. That was one of my items, I did a lot of them. And this is what my illustrations look like for my nutcrackers when I was making them. I would do them in black and white first, and then I would make copies of them and try different colors to see what colors I liked the best. But these are my original drawings. This is one of my banks I did for the Danbury Mint as a collectible. I did a whole series of these. This one, you put a coin at the end of this little sleigh and you hit the lever on the back and this little sled and the Coca-Cola bear comes down and puts some money in the bank. This is a mechanical bank that never existed as an antique, and I was creating new mechanical banks in the same style that the old ones were, but all new designs. This is, the, I have albums. Oh, here I am on Home Shopping Network. Mike Mozart, Home Shopping Network. There I am with my lawn and garden products I sold a lot of on Home Shopping Network. Oh, what else is in here? Oh, here, here, you're gonna, this will be one of the first times I ever showed on my kids. That's my oldest son, probably around 1987, on the Home Shopping Network, he, he didn't present, but he came along with me, and that's the outdoor set where I was selling birdhouse planters. Birds could actually live inside a hanging planter that plants grew in. And here's my oldest son on the main stage, the main set of QVC, the morning set. This is the Canadian Shopping Channel called the Canadian Shopping Channel. I used to appear on that. 
and I sold all kinds of lawn and garden products. There I am on the outdoor set of, of um, QVC. This is the birdhouse planter. I don't have a sample of it out right now, but see, that's how what it looks like. And I sold hundreds of products. Now, something you haven't seen yet, oh, those are all those cool planters I did. I did so much Disney Easter stuff. And it's easier to look at all these pictures. I did all the Sesame Street Easter stuff for decades. It, this is the Sesame Street eggs. You wrap them around the eggs and they shrink when you put them in hot water. Here's one of my Sesame Street kits. I did a lot of 101 Dalmatians for Easter. This was all my artwork. Here's another one of my Aladdin sets. Here's the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs that I did. Here's troll eggs when trolls were popular. This is my artwork. This is my design and my artwork. A mini paper doll set for Easter, for Easter egg coloring. A Mickey Mouse baseball card set. This is my design, my artwork, all this stuff. Here's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Here is another Mickey one with pearly paint inside because I like shiny reflective paint. Here is another Mickey and Minnie set. Here is the Winnie the Pooh set. Here's some Winnie the Pooh color forms I did. Guys, I could sit here all day and just show you all the different Disney products I designed, created, sculpted, painted. This was a Minnie Mouse purse set that came with a little Minnie Mouse purse. Um, here it is. Here's the Minnie Mouse purse that came with it. That's the way it looked when it was packed. But that's where the background artwork looked when I painted it. And I did a generic one that had like a cute little Easter bunny. And there's her little pink purse. There's another one. I did Muppets. So I did the Muppets Easter products for years. A little Muppets magic kit. I did Flintstones. I did Flintstones for Denny's too. And here is I did Beauty and the Beast. Here's a different Aladdin set. Guys, I did this for I did this for 45 years. I was one of the major artists that designed most of the products that you guys had ever seen in your lives. Here's one of my Little Mermaid sets. Here's another Little Mermaid set. There's the there is the product sheet for the Big Blow Molded Bunny. I mean, I did I, I did so much stuff. I did so much stuff, guys. Here's one of my Easter egg color trays that had little egg cups in it, so you wouldn't make a mess. Here are lace eggs that I did. Walmart carried those for years. Here's one of my 101 Dalmatians Easter baskets I did. Here's some poo eggs I did, a poo watercolor set I did. Guys, this is all my artwork, all my design, all my creativity. And I have samples of all this, and I have a lot of the original artwork that went into making these. And oh, I did these hanging planters that were wind socks. I did these pocket planters, which sold on QVC. That one draped over a mailbox at the road. I. I Look how big these albums are. It's hard to imagine. Look how big these albums are if you flip through the albums. Look at all the Nutcrackers. Guys, 2,000 Nutcrackers. All different. I've done for Lord & Taylor, Fine Leans, Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, Walmart, Kmart, Target, CVS, Rite Aid, Kohl's, Zellers, Canadian Tire. I did these for everybody. And I have samples of most of them here. And look, I did all kinds of other things. You know, I did everything. Here's more of my weekly reader things I did. Here's more Disney artwork I, I did for the Easter egg color kits. Here's more of my book illustrations. Here's the Lego thing I showed you earlier, but these are for the different coloring books I did. I designed the Walter Foster How to Draw the Disney Characters book series. And I did a, a lot of foam balls that changed colors called the chameleon line back in the 90s. Yeah, so I was good enough to actually show people how to do them. This I really believe that my new metal flake techniques, the brand new ones that I've just invented now, are even more sparkly and more magnificent than the ones that were pre-pandemic. It's, it's hard to say, honestly, because I don't have one of the pre-pandemic ones on hand to compare. But wow, they're beautiful. I'm going to take some of these older versions I made and made fancier new versions with some of these fancy new metal flakes because Mimo's back. Since the documentary that's being filmed on my life is forcing me to take out a lot of old products and old artwork from the past 30 years. I'll be posting some more videos of it so everyone can see just how extensive my career has been, how much background I have, how I'm a real OG artist of Uncle Scrooge McDuck and the Monopoly guy. I didn't even post any pictures of my 30-year-old Monopoly artwork that was official from McDonald's. So I'll be posting a lot of that. Remember, the value in a painting is in the signature. It's the entire life of the artist, what they lived and what they, they lived for. And I can't wait to try out these new techniques on a lot of my old classic designs. 
because I think they're so beautiful and magnificent, even more sparkly than the original ones. They're the 